a smooth continuum cone mid-range driver, a diamond dome tweeter, and an aluminum housing. Let's not forget about that massive turbine head and its inert housing, and oh my goodness, that sweet rose nut finish. What does this mean? Abbey Road Studios has come to Orange, Connecticut. So for all you negative F, uh, YouTubers, F you, because you can't afford it. <laughs> Jim Brower was nice enough to let us in his home again to show us his latest upgrade to his main listening area, a pair of $17,000 Bowers & Wilkins 803 D3s. So this comes off. You want it over there or over here? Um, yeah, put it over there, it's fine. How's that? Huh? Look at that. <laughs> Pretty girthy. It's very girthy. Oh, that's a thing. Yeah, we were talking about that. The, yeah. the ramp. So it slides down. You're going to flip Pretty it. Cool, right? You're going to flip it. Right? Yeah, she's going to flip it, I think. Corner. <laughs> <laughs> cool, very slowly. Actually, it's pretty easy when you think about it. All right, I think we're almost ready. Here we go. Oh, you yeah, got the wood like, finish. Nice. Of course. Gotta get the wood finish. Nice. Look at that, huh? Look at that craziness. Is that fantastic or what? Look at that. That's great the way that moves. Isn't that fantastic? Mm -hmm. So we have the 803 uh, D3 here, which has uh, you know uh, been out for about two years. Um, the classic thing with the BMW design is the decoupled, decoupled design where you have the uh, tweeter and the Nautilus tube. This has got the famous diamond tweeter, and this is the new turbine for the mid-range with the continuum driver. Both pieces are basically made from solid aluminum, so completely dead. As far as that goes. That's crazy. And then we have our uh, matrix cabinet. This is a, a reverse from last, from the old model. The old model, it went this way, so now we're going this way with the new model. So because of that, they have the uh, main drivers in these uh, aluminum enclosures. So we have the jumpers. That's for if you want to uh, not buy wire. For those who can't, af know. for those who can't afford my hundred hundred thousand dollars speaker cables, if you want to use a single cable, you can. Now to buy wire these speakers, JB is placing high frequency cables on the inside and low frequency cables on the outside. This improves the resolution of low level detail. I'm sure one of the YouTubers will disagree with that. Yeah, buy wiring is just a it's science there. fiction man, you don't need to do that. There There's my hundred thousand dollar pure silver cables there. Just give you a heads up, there's stuff in these boxes, these are your grills. What's that? These boxes are your grills. I don't care. I'm not going to use the boxes. I'm not going to use the grills. Grills are bad for sound quality. Whoa. I just lost myself there. Grills are very bad. Yeah, it's like putting a muffle on your... You want the cheapest tweak in the world? Take the grills off the speakers. All right. Abbey Road Studios comes to Orange, Connecticut, right? Abbey Road's for sure. Skywalker Ranch, more likely. Yeah. Alright, so we gotta go over here. Don't do this again. Well, you gotta make sure you. All right, so the main thing we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a stereo image. So we want to try and build the uh, perfect triangle. So we're going to take a quick measurement and see where we got them. And then uh, see what we got here. We got seven feet. That's about right. I'm going to put a tape measure on the Twitter. <coughs> so we got seven 
to my ears. Seven foot three. That one's gonna look gonna be too close. That one's oh it's a seven three, but that doesn't make sense. We'll have to fiddle with that a little bit. Keep going. There we go. One more. Okay, that should be good. That looks better, actually. <coughs> That's it. Seven. Seven and a half. Okay. Let's go to that one. Seven and a half. Perfect. Right on. Yep. Oh. Yep, that should be pretty good. I see this tweeter right here aiming straight for your ear. Straight for my ear, right? Did a pretty good job, right? Even the camera sees it. Check this that's out, guys. Yeah, uh, that's the key. Gotta get the tweeter yeah. aiming for the ear there. Now, for those of you who don't know, YouTube doesn't like it when you upload content that contains copyrighted music. I could easily get flagged here for a copyright strike, so that's why we can't listen to how magnificent these speakers sound. However, although it does sound quite good on video, Nothing will do these speakers justice like actually being in the room yourself. I suggest you all check these out at your local retailer where available. I'm sure the clerks there in your region will be nice enough and more than happy to help you hear how these sound. They are $17,000 after all, so even if you don't go in with the intention of buying, at least one can dream, right? For reference, the musical selections played by JB and Bill for their tests here were Ricky Don't Lose That Number by Staley Dan and Young Man Blues by The Who. I can't say that I'm the biggest fan of these types of songs, but hearing them on these speakers were really helping me change my mind fast. So anyway, as far as the upgrade goes, you know, we've done the 803 D3s. They're the, um, one, two, they're like the third in the line of the uh, Bowers and Wilkins. 800 is the top, then there's 802, 803. Uh, these are like, for my listening area, would be the perfect size. The 802 and 803s would be kind of big uh, for this size. Um, basically, the big advantage of this speaker would be the uh, studio quality. Um, you know, they're used in Abbey Road Studios. I listened to a lot of Beatles, obviously, and a lot of uh, music that was recorded in Abbey Road. So that's one reason why I wanted the speakers. Uh, I've always wanted a pair, um, pair of the Bowers and Wilkins reference speakers, uh, so now I have them. Um, so you know, basically, right now we have to uh, let them break in. They're probably going to need probably about 50 to 100 hours to give the uh, full um, evaluation. But so far, uh, I think Bill will agree it's a fantastic sound, right, Bill? Bill would 100% right. agree that the sound, even pre-break-in, is phenomenal. Yes. So, yeah, I, I've heard a couple small, like, highs that were a little hard that need a little softening up, and that will definitely come with break-in. Other than that, the things are amazing. Yeah. Then as far as CD versus the computer, I mean, that's one of those uh, touchy subjects. <laughs> that's a long discussion. Quite honestly, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, basically, as long as you're in a losses format, it should be the same as a CD. Uh, in theory, it should sound better if you're using a, one of the high-end file formats like Ordvana or Amara, or uh, I'm trying to think there's another one, probably Jaber. Uh, those allow you to upsample to uh, DSD, which is uh, Dirk Stream Digital. Um, that's one of those things you kind of have to sit down and actually listen to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you can say whatever you want on the internet, but if, unless you've actually done the AB in the room listening to the speakers, it's very hard for you to make the yeah, actual I'd, evaluation. You'd love the people to say, oh, class D, class D. Yeah. Uh, you know. So, I mean, at least when I've done the evaluation, comparing to uh, straight 44 one, first the upsampling with the computer to uh, DSD through the Mac uh, DAC, there's definitely a sound difference, to my ear at least. As always, please subscribe for more sound room walkthroughs. We've actually got a video in the works explaining why JB has a separate power box in his basement for his main listening area. He also goes into why he thinks digital audio files from a Mac are better than CDs, even though he's got a ton of CDs around the room. Right, so what's going on with these, Jim, again? The Omawash 2s? We never got to hear these on video, but I mean, what's these going are, on? Uh, these are being donated to uh, my friend Mike Vendetti. Who I work with a tweeter about 
15 years ago. And what you got there? This is my growler. New England Brewing, best brewing in Connecticut. Mm. 